Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Burk. Today I'm interviewing Nico Frank. He's a singer-songwriter. He also plays guitar. Uh, he also might play other instruments, but I haven't met him, so I'm going to talk to him about that, and we will answer all those questions, because this is an interview after all. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this interview with Nico. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so I'm going to start with some icebreaker questions to keep, put the interview in motion. Perfect. Sounds uh, good. Favorite movie? Oh, God. Uh, okay. If I'm, no matter what, I will always go for Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. Love that one. Um, oh, shoot, what else? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> TV show? Uh, Game of Thrones. I'm a huge... Yeah, you're one of those. That, yeah, that that sort of uh, genre is great. Or there's a there's a cool. show called Sense Eight that I really Sense do love. Sense Eight is that on Netflix? Mhm. Okay, I've heard of that. A book called The Four Agreements, which I love that book. A lot of it, it's more philosophical. Um, okay. And there's another one called uh, The Music Lesson by Victor Wooten. Cool. I love that one. Rip it song. Oh. Uh, for sake of right now, Golden Slumbers. Okay. The Okay. Love that song. Favorite album? I know people like to answer with albums. Album? Um. Oh God. Uh, Brand New Day, Sting, 1999. Okay. Cool. <laughs> favorite place? Favorite color? Favorite right color? now, red. Love red. Right now. Yeah. Cool. It's always more like a doing my feeling this right now. Or, yeah. 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 Cool. I love red. Favorite place in I? Um. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> Montana Ave. I love how like it just reminds me of home. Oh, okay. Island. Yeah. Rhode Island. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's so unique, you know. You just yeah. Walk around and there's there's like a one Starbucks maybe, but there's uh, one coffee spot called Primo Paso, and I always love to sit there and read a book and drink unbelievable coffee because they they have really good coffee there <laughs> <laughs> nice um mm-hmm. so what ha- when did you make the decision to move to la from rhode island oh man well i actually moved from savannah georgia and okay. um i was a uh, full-time student there but halfway through my sophomore year i was playing music every weekend with the guys and um making money and having fun and I realized I was happy playing music not well I I loved you know studying design work but music was always the thing that really made me happy cool so I was like all right you know I'm moved to do it (laughs) my sister lives here so okay it wasn't like a wasn't 100 percent too impulsive yeah but there was still some some form of comfort level there did you grow up listening to oh I already named him he uh my favorite record uh Sting for, for yeah. sure. I love Sting. I love Stevie Wonder, um, James Taylor, and, and Tony Bennett. A lot of like the old school jazz cats, mm-hmm. Etta James and, and Aretha Franklin, for sure. Um, but yeah, all, all a lot of folk music and, and R&B, jazz. Yeah. Cool. Stuff that made you think, you know, no, no yeah. songs were just there. It was always like yeah. something really, really meaningful. Does that reflect your sound now? or? Well, it reflects what I'm trying to accomplish, I think. And yeah. I think... Just from feedback from people, yeah, I really do think I'm trying to. I'm not trying to write like you know, uh, one hit wonder music. I'm yeah. trying to make something that's gonna last for a while. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that sound in your album. Oh, too. thank you very much. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. So, what song off that EP is your like musical baby? Oh man. Um. Well, that's interesting. I think a lot of them, each one of those songs, capture a very specific moment in my life. And so they're all very special to me, I, mm-hmm. I think. But I think the first song on the record right now, I, I love that it speaks on something so uh, stressful these days. You know, mm-hmm. we're always talking about religion. We're always talking about 
um, qualms in religion and the fact that I don't know that I was just feeling a certain way and it cut to the point I think very well or at least it, my perspective yeah. very well and it showed my side of the story so um, right now I think it's that one it's called The Lonely Limit very nice so, yeah, very nice um, so what can you tell us about your new EP that you're working on right oh, now well I'm not going to dis- disclose too yeah. much but I'm just I'm excited because the, well the first EP showcased uh, who I was and, and what I was capable of in front of one microphone mm-hmm. completely live okay and I want to capture that same idea and that same feel and that same organic thing that was on that EP, but in a completely live band setting. So Whoa, okay. one one live room in a studio um, with myself and a few other musicians for each song, um, but still maintaining a very simple approach to the songs. So that's really what I want to maintain. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be it'll be just as much energy, just as much actually, hopefully more energy. I think with the songs that I've chosen for for this yeah. one, it's five songs okay. and um, a few interludes here and there. So it'll be five to seven tracks, but mm-hmm. six tracks. We'll say six. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's the plan for the EP. So a lot more energy, full band, um, but maintaining that live feel. When did you start working on it? I've been working on it forever. I mean, it, it's it's yeah. one of those songs or one of those EPs where it's the real first release. I I don't really consider the live, the one take sessions, a first release right mm-hmm. now. It, it's more of a here's where I'm at. Um, it's like a hey, I'm playing music, but this is I don't even want to say it's it's an appetizer for the first course. It's like yeah, it, it's very, um, I don't know, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, <laughs> to be completely honest with you, but yeah, <laughs> I don't even think I answered the question, what was the question again? Um, <laughs> what's your ideal venue, like if you had anywhere to play? Anywhere to play? Oh, yeah, Red Rocks, Rocks any Red day. Red Rocks, okay. Red Rocks, in, um, yeah, in Colorado, I think that is the, the coolest amphitheater, oh my yeah. god, yeah, either that or the Hollywood Bowl, but the Hollywood Bowl is mm. sort of like... That's a really incredible set. No, I, I think I think Red Rocks would be so perfect. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Okay. What? What? <laughs> okay. So you're playing this show on Friday. Right. Um. What are you playing by yourself or? Oh no! So we're playing at the study in Hollywood, okay. and um, the idea of the show is it's opening up with Allie Ryan, um, who's a good friend of mine. She's amazing. And uh, then I get up, and I'm with uh, three other guys, so keys, drums, and bass. And it's interesting. This this show's going to be very different from the last because, well, one, my, my normal go-to drummer is out of town, so I'm bringing somebody else on, which oh, will be fun. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'm also trying a little something different this time. It's going to be a little bit more focused, I think. Okay. Uh, we usually got up and jammed out, and I think this one is going to be a lot more planned, a lot more of a show, and a lot more... I want to be able to show what I can really do on stage. So that's, yeah. that's the goal for right now. Um, and then the whole plan of, this, uh, of the night is actually focused completely on the closing act, and they are incredible group of musicians 12 I think uh, individual singers Whoa. and it's an acapella group so no no band no backing oh tracks God, no nothing awesome. but yeah so they'll they'll be um, doing their thing I think it's vocal percussion too and yeah it's something it's quite a spectacle so it's you know, awesome anybody out there listening you guys come check it out <laughs> um, can you tell us about any of your songs on your new EP yeah well I, I'll, I'll say this um, one song you do know and I've released it before. It's Midnight Blues. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way that we're formatting it, or the way that I'm formatting it, formatting it for the EP, is going to be very different than what you've heard. Okay. And um, it's very exciting. Um, this is going to be... It's how I've always envisioned Midnight Blues, and I've tried to do it... I've produced this song on my laptop probably two dozen times, mm-hmm. and uh, I finally found one that works for me, and I'm just... So excited to show everybody. That's really <laughs> going to be... Yeah. Did you write way. Midnight Blues? Yeah, I wrote everything. I wrote okay. everything on the record is myself, yeah. Um, which I really want to maintain. I, I love writing with people, but 
for a first release, I definitely want to keep everything completely me. Yeah. Um, even when it comes to production, like everything. everything Authentic made. and everything. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So what's your like process of like writing a song and then um, um, putting it on like record? Mm-hmm. Like what's that process like? Oh, well, okay. So writing, my approach with writing has always been exploratory. Mm-hmm. So um, beginning writing, uh, oftentimes, at least for a lot of songs, uh, I've always written the music first. And I said, okay, so I feel like X, Y, and Z whenever I listen to the p- this piece of music. And from that sentiment, from that feeling that I get from the music, I I say, okay, I, I know I can talk about this, I can talk about that, I can talk about that. And then from those subjects, I begin playing with melody and playing with ideas. Mm-hmm. And more often than not, I'll say something random or, or just be uh, uh, scatting something over. And all of a sudden, that turns into words. And I go, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's a... A song laid out, <laughs> nice. just because you know playing with it. Yeah. But yeah, the exploratory thing has also led to a lot of, a lot of music. Um, just sitting down at a piano and going, I don't know what I'm about to play, and I don't want to play anything that I have played before, and so I just start doing something and. Yeah, but it's it's always, more often than not, music first. I've I've rarely written songs that are just lyrics then music. Mm-hmm. Um, although that has once. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a lot of um exploration. And then okay, so once the song's written, right, to get to to get it on record to finish, you know, the, answering your question, um always a vocal and a single instrument first. Mm-hmm. And if it happens to be guitar, I I begin you know, I'll, I'll I'll record the song guitar and on vocal. And for production purposes, I always love trading out that instrument. So say I write a song on guitar, right? I go, all right, let's try it on keys. Yeah. I'll play the song on keys, and then um, usually if I write a song on keys, I'll try it on guitar as well, and that's that's usually the transfer there. But I find I I, I create the most interesting thing on guitar, not keys. So production-wise, is usually guitar-focused, but uh, there are a lot of like organ aspects and and Rhodes aspects involved. But yeah, I don't want to disclose too much because that would uh, lead okay. to you know saying too much about the record. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. For right now, that's my that's my secret. recording process, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, where do you see yourself in the next four years as a musician or elsewhere? Yeah, no, I, I well, okay. So w- with everything in my control, uh, my goal for four years is to be touring yeah. on the road. Um, you know, full time playing music, recording music, and hopefully by that again, you know, I I see myself on a much larger stage, mm-hmm. but that only happens because I, you know, I play so much. So yeah. So naturally, that should be the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, no matter how, um, no matter what opportunities find their way in my direction, I guess um, that is that is a guarantee. I will be touring. I will be playing, but you know. To play on a larger stage, that's not often, uh, you can't just do that by yourself. So finding the right team, finding the right people, and um, figuring out the, and capitalizing on the right opportunities can lead to that much quicker than just four years. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Cool. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite venue that you have played so far? Oh, wow. Uh, so, so I keep coming back to this place called The Study in Hollywood, and I do love that venue quite a bit because... Mm-hmm. The room is really. Um, I, I I I always ask Morrow, the guy who um, runs sound. Never put reverb on my voice. Don't put reverb because yeah. the 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 room is so naturally vibrant with its own reverb, um, and the the sound system is great. The people are great there, so I keep going back to the study for for that reason. Mhm. Mm. Cool. That's all my questions. Um, right on, thank right you on. for being on on the brick. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me.